Hey YouTube, welcome back to another video. Today I wanted to talk about why I am my most favorite person to spend time with and how my self-care and my self-love plays into that and makes that even possible. Um, I know I have mentioned sisterhood and we know that human connection and um, friends, families, and our partners and husbands and boyfriends and fiancés and all these different people in our lives and even our children, um, we need them and they need us and you know you can't be an island not all the time but you can really kind of gauge how much your self-love is at its optimal functioning level when you can really be by your damn self and being by yourself it's something that is just so crucial and in a world where it's like so go 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 and so busy and you're on a lot of the times that alone time aside from just getting ready for your day going to the bathroom and sleeping you really need to make sure that first of all you know that you like to be by yourself <laughs> second of all that you can be by yourself and thirdly it's not because you're forced to be by yourself but you really have things that you enjoy doing um, you enjoy being with your own thoughts, resting, breathing, relaxing, um, and going within. And um, also, too, you can even be doing something. And I have found just with a lot of just small talk and um, comments that people make or um, even asking about my personal life, you know, like, what do you do all day? Um, or um, you did that by yourself or... Um, no, I like being blah, 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 blah. And it usually involves 20 other people or their significant other in some way. And you really should be able to balance it out. No, I'm not saying that I tell people I don't want to be with you. I want to be alone. Um, I'd much prefer to do this by myself. I'm not saying I come off with that kind of energy or uninvite people to things or, um, you know, make it weird or and I don't act like oh god I'm too good to you know be around you I'm definitely like it's all about me um god why would I want to be with anyone else I'm like the best thing <laughs> so I am enough um we're not acting like that but again enjoying your time by yourself when you start implementing it in your life as a lifestyle, as a practice, as a ritual, as a belief system, you will see the benefits. And so I've got some got some little things I want to kind of go over um, that kind of inspired this video. And um, so this was a uh, a little post from I want to make sure I'm pronouncing this right. Anamara Life Coach. A-N-A-M-A-R-I-A. -A -A. Yeah. Oh, wow. <laughs> Anna Marie. Wow. <laughs> I'm like, Anna Marie. Okay, that's what happens when things are blurred all together. No, no space, no nothing. I feel so, I feel really slow. Anyway, Credit goes to her. Um, this popped up on my feed because I do follow a lot of other life coaches and things like that. And she touched on unexpected benefits of being single. And I really liked how she put this together. So first, she has more time and energy to put into friendships, which, yes. And even though she's focusing this on being single as far as your relationship status, I want to pull out how this could tie into being alone um so yes when you aren't one of those people that whenever you get in a relationship i will segue this a little bit are you one of those people or maybe just ask yourself recognize if this is you are you one of those type of people where you know you get into something new and it's all about them and you pull away from your connections and you lose yourself you're drowning in that that goes away and then you swing back and you're like, hey everyone, I'm single again. Or you need your friends to pull you up out of that hole. Not a good look. So I think that's where she's pulling, touching on that, I, I feel like. Um, because yes, your friendships, I've talked about this before, are relationships and they need 
um, they need a um, reciprocal exchange of energy and giving and caring. But um, so that was the first one. Um, the second one, she says, it's easier to stay focused on your personal goals. That's a big one. So often you can morph into what everybody else needs or wants around you. So again, great to be communal, great to have your family vision and the focus of what everyone else wants to do. But where do you fit into that? Are you losing yourself in that? Do you feel like it's going to take you away from your own personal journey? And do you even know what your own personal journey is? Or are you always a person that like goes with the flow and you're just there? Okay. Spend less money. Eh. That can be however you want to see it. Stronger understanding of yourself and your interests. I like this one. I like this one a lot because with yourself, you can find yourself, know yourself, talk to yourself, remember yourself, um, cultivate yourself. Um, and again, with the understanding, how do you understand something? Learning, focus, paying attention to it. Paying attention to yourself. If no one is around distracting you and constantly bombarding you with their wants and needs and whatever, especially if they're a very dominant energy, then you have time to be like, huh, what do I want? What do I want to do? Where do I want to be? Um, what do I like? Um, can be more spontaneous. That's a good one. Um, not putting yourself in a box, you know, with yourself. You don't, you, 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 you can begin to push yourself and be like, well, I'll be waiting forever, waiting for everyone else. Or I could just do it. I can go to the museum. I can go to a museum. I can go to the, on a walk. I can um, go see a movie. I can go, and I'm going to touch on the TV watching and the movies a little later. I'm a little biased about that. That is going to be my insert of my own personal, how I roll with the movies and the TV and the screen time, but we'll get into that. Um... But you can be more spontaneous and really, you know, you don't have to wait for anyone's availability. You know, their time schedule. Well, not this Friday, next Friday. Now you're putting things on hold. Now you're like, eh, you know. Um, last thing she has, it's great. It's a great feeling to know that all you need to feel whole and happy is you. That is the icing on the cake with this whole thing. That sometimes being so fluid, so accommodating. Um, that's a big word that I really have to check. Um, so about everyone else, being kind, being considerate, wanting to include everyone else, or need feeling like you need other people to share your joy, share the moment. Um, you know, like you are, you are all that you really need. And that happiness comes from inside out. So let's go to the next thing that's going to keep me on track with this video so I don't ramble. There are um, six categories that I agree with that are part of your self-care, self-love. That is physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, social, and professional. We're going to bump social down. Um, alone you need to have something that you do in every category, I would suggest. Um, I found that when I did this for myself, in not a very formal way, just very, just, just, just flow with it, um, I feel very balanced and I feel very accomplished. Let's go over some ideas or suggestions in these categories. So the physical, by yourself, I touched on this before, you know, being getting active, um, going and doing something out of your comfort zone that, again, you don't need a party. You know, enjoy scenery. Take a mini trip. Um, make yourself beautiful. Do something. You don't need your girlfriend to go get your nails done. Go get your nails done by yourself. Don't, don't, don't start slacking on that. Oh, I'm waiting for blah, 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 blah. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Um, look, oh my goodness, let's, let's touch on this, but we're going to really going to be honest. <laughs> I know things happen when we get busy and, you know, and maybe even your financial, 
Okay, work on the finances so that you don't have to have gaps in between your sets. You are missing three nails and you're way overdue with your with your fill-in if, if nails are your thing. If, if not that, manicure. If you don't paint your own nails, don't let your dip and your, your gel polish be looking chipped and you're like, yeah, so overdue because people notice the hands. And um, even we, we were somewhere and my daughter said, I like your nails. And I looked and I'm like, oh, baby, why do you like her five nails? She got three on one hand, two on the other. She's like, oh, honey, these are so old. I need to get these done. It was so far beyond getting them done. You didn't just break them all in like a day's time and couldn't get like they were white. So like they were a little ashy and it was just so bad. And then you could tell that some of them hadn't even broken. They were all the way off. Like they had popped up. It was just like, if eyebrows is your thing, set it up and make sure that you have your, before you get out of that chair for your, for your next threading, waxing, whatever, book the next appointment. If it's not eyebrows, if your lashes, stay up on your lashes. If it's your workout routine, do not wait for your friends, your gym buddies, your trainer to get their life together and squeeze you in, schedule in. Go by your damn self. Discipline. If it's facials. If it's your tanning. I don't know. If it's your pedicures. If it's your whatever it is. Go by yourself and get it on that calendar. Or or plan it around your finances. Okay? Every, who can't do every two weeks? Okay? I'm, I'm just saying. Because... Physical, physical parents is there. Hygiene, you know, regularly, you know, scheduling your dentist appointments. And I would even say esthetician, um, dermatologist, uh, you know, if you're looking into getting some work done, whatever it is, make that a priority and put on, don't just keep talking about it. Go and do these things. Okay. Um, that was like a, that was like a, a tangent. Um, psychological. Did I say psychological? Yes, I did. Okay, so some examples of psychological would be practicing a hobby, learning something new, challenging yourself, um, doing something creative. Let me touch on the creativity. Everything doesn't have to be a business. Do not add added pressure to yourself like, oh, you know, maybe I could sell this. Maybe, you know, who who, who cares if this is like, you know up to the standard of like would anyone want this need this can this supply a need just make something beautiful and and allow yourself the space to really be a kid again when you get into this thing of like even if you're not don't consider yourself a crafter any kind of expression of making something that is beautiful to you it could be a flower arrangement it could it could be taking a picture and then getting the picture printed and then picking a nice frame. It could be taking a class. Everything is back to normal now. So you have Joann's, you have Michael's, you have Hobby Lobby and places like this that will teach you a skill or um, a way to do something. You'd be surprised how fun you would find something to be. Um, uh, screen time. TV time. I'm itchy. Y'all probably heard me, heard me itch, itching myself. You know, when you go outside and you just get bit up. Okay, so the watching movies, watching TV shows, I get it. You're escaping. You're, you know, living through the character. You're feeling the feels. You know, it might be a great story. I've had so many people tell me, you know, you would like something. You, you would love the characters. You would love... Um, the story you would love where it takes you and 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 I don't get it because by the time I'm gonna sit and give literally hours of my day to watch something that isn't even real smart I would like to go I would think I would like to go and experience that for myself so instead of watching this character go to this downtown beach town whatever and you know, meet someone and shop and you watch her do her little things. I'm gonna get in my car, drive to, oh say, 
Alexandria, Virginia, Old Town Alexandria, where they have the water taxi, all the best breweries and restaurants and shops and historic areas and um the water taxi takes you over into maryland and dc on the potomac and um live music you see the difference why would i sit in my house to watch the leading character find love do all these things go all these places it's summertime. It's beautiful weather. I love being outdoors. I love just, I'm going to go and I'm going to come back with my own memories and my own like, oh, I met, you know, this person, that person. I talked to my bartender. I tried great food. You know, I learned something about Mommy, history. Yeah, hey, baby. Can I, can I have a popsicle? A popsicle? <laughs> <laughs> Please. First of all, you did not wash your face. I need to do this hair. You don't need any sugar. Oh, see what happens when you throw a tantrum? You're going to wait. Because I don't have any. Oh, yes, I do. But you're still going to wait. And go close the door so I can finish making my YouTube video. I'm um, trying to thought, trying to thought. So, yeah, by the time I watch another character go through this emotional up and down and all this, you know, there's going to be um, a problem to solve, something that she needs to discover, something that she needs to do. That I'm living that life. I don't need any more emotional roller coasters. I don't need to be any more emotionally invested in anything, especially when it's not real. Mm -mm, I'm not a big TV watcher for that very reason. It doesn't interest me to go through go through all of that i'm not saying i don't watch movies with my kids and i don't i haven't enjoyed a series here or there but i'm more of a give me a star wars give me something that's so out of this world <laughs> you know what i mean spaceships magical creatures you know sci-fi um that kind of stuff i i'm not mm -mm. my life is enough to fully engage myself and be like girl i, I don't know about p valley and, and all these different series that everyone's raving about. Let me tell you what happened when I went out the other night and I met like three different guys and they all bought my drinks and then I got my dinner paid for and then I got invited to the other venue where they had like live music and then after that I went and caught an Uber and went over here and met up with these people and then I did hookah and then I did all, you know what I mean? Like a night in the life of DC, bar club hopping, just enjoying my 30s i i don't i don't need any any help in that in that category and so my point is you could be creating whatever it is that you want to experience if you were to get out there and and do it no i'm, I'm not always alone when i do that because i am connecting and interacting with people and meeting new people so it isn't like oh always solo but i'm not afraid to go by myself and then see what happens when i get there you know what I mean? It's like the world opens up to me. So it's like, when my girlfriends, you know, hey, you know, what have you been up to? I'm like, girl, do I have a story for you? No, I haven't had time to watch everybody else live life around me. No. Mm -mm. I, and especially when it's fiction. Like, it's nothing to pull from. Like, someone sat there and dreamed all this up. So not coming from... For you TV watchers or, you know, the, the most popular series right now. But I just feel like mm, I would rather just live it, experience it. And, and you know, the sky's the limit. This, but you can't be afraid to go and, and do something and, 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 and see what happens. Because just like you're watching a story unfold on the TV screen, when you're out and you're doing things that you want to do, you're calling the shots. You're writing the story. You are ever creating. You are the main character. All lies on you, boo. So that's what I have to say about that. And so I thought it was interesting when it said limiting your screen time. Um, again, watch scrolling on Pinterest, watching TikToks. All you're watching all these people show you how they cook, travel, you know, create, decorate. Um, learn something new, try something new, get out of their comfort zone. Okay, they get a like, they get a comment, a heart, a share, and you're sitting on the couch, sedentary, 
gaining weight if you're not moving around, burning some calories. And you've wasted how many time? How much time? <sighs> so that's why I'm a little just anti-TV. I don't even have a TV in my bedroom because I am the story. I am the ever unfolding of the, wow, like what a day, what a day, what a day that I have, what a weekend. Like I was doing all the things. I was doing all the things. Y'all will spend more time watching someone do all this stuff. And how, when was the last time you that you went out and did something? <laughs> Seriously. I know people that have mentioned... Um, I, I'm, I'm not even going to go in. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Day trips. Ooh. Get in your car. Drive, drive three hours. While you're driving, sit with your thoughts. Enjoy the scenery. Think about, reflect on how much fun you're going to have, where you want to go, where you're going, where you, who you want to be, how your week is going to go. Maybe work on some affirmations, daydream. Let your, let your mind just, just chill. When you get there, you're going to be like, wow, what do I want to do? I'm by myself. I've never been in this town before. What do I want to do? You'd be surprised how many people will bump into you or, or strike up a conversation with you. And where are you from? What are you doing? You're like, and then you tell them, I just drove here. I just, just here for a day trip. Oh my goodness. I'm a local. You should go here. There's a, this going on tonight. Da -da 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 -da. What's your name again? Oh my goodness. Blah, blah, blah. I would be right 15 minutes down the road and that happened to me. Meet beautiful people from New Hampshire and they're like, well, where would, you know, they're asking me about this town and things. I mean, I, and that's just my personality too, but you'd be surprised when you've got this put away and you're forced to like open your eyes, open all your senses and like, huh, I actually don't have this super rigorous itinerary this super like I have all these things to do for everyone else today I can literally just do whatever because I'm in a new place and I can explore I can just take my time I can see what I see and something can just pop up how good that feels okay so we're still we're still on psychological here um challenging yourself that has been something that you, we've seen the memes and and it doesn't have to be extreme, mountain climbing, you know, skydiving. It doesn't even have to be that serious. But wherever you find yourself stopping, pausing, just a little bit, a little hesitance there. Just try it. Life begins at the end of your comfort zone. And for some, maybe it is going back to school. Maybe it is taking a course. Maybe it is learning some something new about these computers and the way that IT is changing things. Maybe it is learning penmanship. Oh my God, how many people do not know how to write cursive? Little things, little things. There's so many different websites and programs that can teach you anything. Learning about different foods, the history of wine and, and all these. I mean, you can just, just write a whole bunch of stuff down. Fold a little piece of paper up, put them in a hat, shake the hat up, and every day draw something and do it. Because it's like, why not? Ooh, why not? Why not? Okay, so I'm going to get away from psychological. Emotional. Okay, I touched on this. Reflecting. Expressing your feelings. That can tie into creativeness. You may not think you're artistic. You may not think that you're musically inclined or, you know, a good dancer or have rhythm. But you'd be surprised if... You found out how you can best express your memories, your current emotions, and how you're feeling. The colors. What are the colors that evoke? You know, what music are you drawn to? What, what catches your eye as far as imagery, visualization? Try to tap into that. Maybe try to recreate that. Again, going back to comfort zone, maybe take a, 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 a art class. Find what mediums and what expressions do work for you. There is pottery. There is 
um oh what's it called um mixed media art there's painting there's sketching there's um watercolor that's, that ties into painting but um oh there's so fun wine and sip sipping wine you know sipping paint things um again you don't have to be a professional you don't have to it doesn't have to be a degree but it could just be like you we have been so groomed into adulting that we we do that for the children we we they do that at school they have art music you know they have their pe they have their reading time library time social studies all these things that every day they get to explore and 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 what doesn't work for them okay they naturally gradually pull away by the time you're in college most of us are like look let me get this degree that's going to pay some bills or give me some kind of status in life a lot of us aren't taking still taking ballet especially wasting money and credits um on you know unless you know that you can you can get some kind of interdisciplinary degree um I remember I was in community college and I was like, I don't have the money and the time to waste on photography, ballet, and um, poetry, English, arts. Like, I, I, I cannot. I can't. As much as I wanted to, I was like, this is not going to help me in any way. And for a long time, that part of me died. I let that part of me be snuffed out under the weight of obviously adulting and growing up and not having the time but not thinking it important and not seeing it as a necessity for me to to cultivate that part of me even decorating is a is a is a way to express your feelings again through the colors through the textures through the mood that you are are invoking in your space when you walk into when i walk into this room it's very it's very bright it's very like open with my glass and my mirrors and it's like, okay, it's not the time to be trying to wind down and, and like be chill. It's like, it's, it's go time. This is my office library slash study room. Um, I do my arts and crafts and my stuff in my kitchen, honestly, cause it's pink and it's bright and it's like a little bit more like stimulating if that's if, if that makes sense and plus i like spreading out on the floor and i have it set up in a, in a different world but this this can't get messy and painty and you know because when it's time to pull out the books and study and things like that i just need this to be um what it is so anyway stress management they have here as emotional i can see that again oh my nose itches where you are identifying your triggers, what causes your stress, and then what are you going to do about it? What is the total opposite of that action, that behavior, that environment, that thing, whatever it is? And it could be people. But again, without spending time with yourself, do you even know that these are things that you need to address? Do you even know that these are the things that you need? Got to keep an open mind here and constantly bring it back, bring our thoughts back to us. Not what our job needs from us, not what someone expects of us, not any kind of societal roles, not even to where we are expected to show up and have some kind of reaction or thought or opinion about things, current world events, trauma news breaking news things going on in our community none of that stuff at the end of the day is your responsibility your responsibility is to at your core love yourself enough to know that you are whole and you being by yourself there's nothing wrong with that that's not strange that's not even narcissistic that is taking care of you because only you can do all these things for you the perfect spouse and the most loving, supportive relationship, partnership, cannot give you these things. I know we hear that a lot. I know, you know, oh, this person came in my life and showed me, you know, made me feel safe, made me feel whole, made me feel happy, made me, made me, you know, really, you know, pushed me to take care of myself, really did it, did it, did it. That is a temporary high of all of the 
chemical reactions to what we feel when we feel love, desire, passion, and the honeymoon phase of all of that. As soon as that shit settles, because it will, and it does, if you do not have a foundation with yourself and a foundation with them, because you too also have to decide why we're doing this, when it doesn't feel good, why are we still doing this? What is our commitment? What is what is the point? Because if you don't have any kind of like, it's going to be like, yeah, I'm out. This doesn't feel good. Doesn't feel good. I'm not feeling all the things. I'm not feeling it. So I'm out. We see that a lot. We see that a lot. But you can't quit on yourself. You can't, you can't just be like, well, this doesn't work for me. So I'm out. What that looks like is relationship hopping with all the wrong people. Can never get it together. You need all these external and substance things to help you get through your day, whether it be alcohol, recreational drugs, prescriptions, constant stimulation in that sense to just help you be you, help you look in the mirror, help you function. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Nope, not good, not good. Not good. Um, it also goes. This is something totally different now. This this list that I'm drawing this um the the my my talking points from so I can stay on, on point. It it touches into professional, but I feel like professional is one of those things that I feel like we as women, we as single mothers, we as black women, we've we we know that we get our degrees, we start businesses, we be killing it in the workforce. We almost overkill it to the point where it's at our own detriment. We put all these other things above ourselves. So you look up and you've got five degrees and your weight isn't where you want it to be. Your health isn't where you want it to be. Your self-care isn't where it needs to be. You have the bags. You have the the stress eating. You have, the, you have no sense of identity and style. You've just kind of let yourself go. You look, you know, you're still doing this frumpy half college student you know like getting this paper getting this getting all these letters behind my name but you're not soft you're not rested you're not beautiful in your own right in your own way you've let that side of you go you don't know what you enjoy you don't know who you are without the degree and the job you're not sensual you're not expressive you're not fun even You've worked so hard and you've done all the other things. And this can go the other way. You can be so la, 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 la. And you don't have anything going for yourself in that sense. But those women oftentimes aren't as... They aren't as crucified for not having anything going for themselves academically or professionally because they have the personality, the interest, the beauty, the the luxury to just enjoy life, be be lighthearted, be go with the flow and all these other things. Does that make sense? So they get teased for being bimbos and uh silly blondes and um uh privilege this and privilege that. It goes way too far left either way you look at it. Does that make sense? You have someone who has spent her whole 20s and better part of her 30s grinding, hustling, and creating all that she has worked so hard for at her own expense. So it's very go, 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 sleepless nights. You know, no time for fun again spa massages facials hair nails makeup shopping discovering who you are enjoying who you are um you know keeping up with yourself you're in the books and you're at work books work book works and on the other side you have these girls that okay they're so pretty they're so this and there's nothing up top and they're just they're just dumb as a pile of rocks. We 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 can come right down in the middle. But how do you find that balance? Only you can figure that out. I've had people elude 
and make little comments that I don't look like a nurse. Well, what does a nurse look like? I'm not going to be a nurse that got bags on her eyes and, you know, run down and looks like I work 72 to 80 hours a week in three or four days. That does not interest me at all. For all the life saving that there is, for all of the, you know, furthering my education, I can go all the way up and be a nurse practitioner at the expense of myself. I think not. At the expense of saving all these people and all these, I think not. You have to find a balance for you so that you can have both. Yes, we need education. Yes, you need money that typically comes from working or doing something to fund your lifestyle if you are not a married, provided for woman. I get it. Or you got a great boyfriend or great fiance. I get it. But without these foundational things and you getting by your damn self and knowing, no, curating, sitting down and planning, like you plan everything else for everybody else, sitting down and asking yourself what you need by yourself to be your best self, to love yourself, then nothing can ever work. You can sit and be really, really pretty, gorgeous, and have and be empty and and still be shallow in a sense. And then you can have all the earthly gains of what your brains and hard work can give you and be so masculine and so run down that like you can't even enjoy it. And now you don't know how to slow down. You don't know how to ease up you don't know how to relax you don't know how to put on makeup put on a dress and go have a glass of wine have a good time and let it all just let it all just go okay reading i didn't touch on reading that goes that ties into challenging yourself reading is a little bit more if you want to escape and go outside of yourself, it's better than TV because at least there with the reading, it come it can come from a place of, you know, these authors have done maybe historical research um, and really pulled together a world that you'll learn new words. Um, it expands, you know, your mind and builds new mental connections and all these things. It's very good cognitively to just practice reading, period. If you really want to again go into a story reading over the tv by all means and then exploring different types of literature there's poetry there are autobiographies and memoirs and um non-fiction of course that can really just you know it's better than just sitting there watching stuff being shoveled into your mind without you having to think shameless shameless interjection of my own personal bias there <laughs> i want to make sure i'm not forgetting something and you know with all these things through yourself you will create new opportunities new possibilities a new feeling within yourself a new level of confidence, a new level, uh, a new outlook on your life as a whole, because you will begin to feel in control. You will begin to see the benefit of and the beauty and the whole purpose of life that you, again, going back to you are enough. You know how to make yourself happy. You don't notice that, you know, um, you don't notice when someone doesn't call you back. You don't notice if they ghost you. You don't notice if maybe if you're even if you are again in a, some kind of union you, that he's not speaking or he's out with the guys or you know whatever 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 because you you are self-fulfilled you don't need to be up under someone all the time you are your own source of whatever it is that you need to give yourself and you know you will surprise yourself you'll make yourself proud you will um really begin expanding and feeling how much more control you have 
with your own reality and with your own experience. But you have to start somewhere. You have to try. You have to know that when you get up in the morning, it's okay to first think about you. First think about how you want to feel. First think about what you want to do and where you want to go. Then get a plan. Okay? Then set those gentle, soft boundaries with the people that you love because they will love you through that when they give you that space to be the best you. That's all you're doing. That's all you're doing is really at the end of the day giving the same love level of love that everybody else needs from everybody else to yourself first so that you can be able to give it because you can't pour from an empty cup you can't you can't you can't nurture from a a, de a depleted place you can't even do good when you feel bitter and really angry about what you haven't been giving yourself and you don't even know the cause you don't even know why you're annoyed and frustrated and, and feeling empty and burnt out. Okay? So reel it in a little bit. Use, again, a planner, a journal, a guide. There's so many little snippets on Instagram and Pinterest that give you a really simple checklist. Let's go over it one more time. Um, you can type in the benefits of self-love and self-care or the benefits of being alone or things to do alone or a self-care or self-love checklist that's going to, again, give you a, a starting point and a outline of, let's go back over it again, physical, psychological, emotional, spiritual, social, and professional. And psychological, again, don't forget that is the umbrella for creating expression, um, your, your, your mental health, your, your, your inner work, your healing, all of those things tie into the psychological, um, and slash emotional. So I hope this video really, really, really makes sense and really, um, helps you see the value of being by your damn self because you need to be your favorite person. You need to be your biggest fan. You need to be your biggest cheerleader and ultimately only you can do that for yourself. And so until the next video, peace. Bye.